So I was calling out to the instructor and he wasn't responding and I thought like, oh, maybe he just can't hear me over the wind. Oh, no. But then the moment I really realised was I saw a scrunched up parachute in front of us and then we hit the ground. The next feeling that I had was just the most intense pain throughout my whole body and I was like, I've gone to hell. Oh um, my God. Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. Well, yeah, it all happened when I was 20 and I decided to go to Europe on a trip around Europe. It's just something I'd, oh, I didn't know anything that I wanted to do in life. All that I knew that was that I wanted to travel. So I was like, all right, let's go to Europe, do the whole thing. And when we got to Switzerland, I decided to skydive and I did it with my best friend, Gemma, who was terrified. She was like, you oh, was adamant her whole life. Like she was never going to do it. weird thinking yep. about it. I'm like, oh my God. And I was did you just like, like, make her do it? Made, forced her. So can you oh, imagine God, am, oh <laughs> if it happened to her I've instead? I have fucking goosebumps. I yeah. literally look at my arm hairs. They're like a kilometre long right so, now. Yeah. So first time you've ever skydived. First time you... I'd ever done it. And okay. it was tandem. And going into it, it sounds so silly now, but there there was not even an ounce of nerves. Like I didn't register that it was dangerous. I think because, no. you know, when you're overseas, life doesn't really feel real. Yeah. You're like, whatever happens over here, you know, it's not going to affect my real life back home. I had that kind of feeling. But also when you're going to, you're paying to do skydiving. These guys are professionals. You're like doing this, like, like you know, could it's, possibly go wrong? you know, everyone yeah. does it. You're yeah. like, let's do it. I, yeah. I completely get where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so on the way up in the helicopter, I was just nothing but excited. Poor Gemma was crying her eyes out. Oh, um, the and then thing. when we jumped out, I was again loving it. The So the beginning part that was meant to be the free fall was the first 30 seconds or whatever. I remember loving it so much thinking I'm going to become a skydiver. Like that's <gasps> how much I was into it. And I'm sure a lot of people have that feeling. That feeling of just oh. like the free fall. Did you just like that it becomes a, the adrenaline. Yeah. I just felt so, yeah, so energized and alive and just like I was doing exactly what I was meant to be doing. And then they say when you feel a tap on your shoulder, you cross your arms over your chest. Oh and so I felt the tap on my shoulder, cross my arms, and that's when they're meant to pull the parachute. And I expected to feel like a big jolt and then mm. slow down, but we didn't. <laughs> All I kind of felt was my hair being ripped backwards. And I thought it was so weird that no one had warned me that it hurts, like that your hair gets ripped out. I was like, that's, that's weird. But because I'd never done it, I had nothing to compare it to, right? So I didn't oh initially God. know that something was wrong. But as more time went on, and it would have been like seconds, right? I to yeah, yeah, like literally seconds. Yeah. But it's weird because time in this moment didn't feel real because it felt so slow, but at the same time so fast. Like I had so much time to think, but it would have only been a few seconds. No. So I was calling out to the instructor, and he wasn't responding. And I thought like, well, maybe he just can't hear me over the oh, wind. No. But I was like. Hey, were you okay? And he just wasn't responding. And I was like, okay, well, I'm sure he's doing everything he can. But then the moment I really realized was I saw a scrunched up parachute in front of us instead oh, no, of no, no. above us and open. I and love how you're just laughing right now. I don't know what, <laughs> like, I might want to cry, but I want to laugh, but I've got goosebumps. So I'm it's like, not oh, fucking makes funny. Me feel like I'm not, I want to spew. It's a long time ago. We're all, we're all fine. It's all good. But um, yeah, I, that's when I realized and I thought, a hundred percent like this is it. I didn't think it would be possible to survive that obviously. And I was still calling out to him, but I, because oh. I, my hair was like pulled backwards. I couldn't even see if the instructor was even attached to me still. Literally. So for all I knew, I was like, maybe I'm just somehow. You could feel him I'm behind you. Well, I, I just didn't, I didn't really know. It was all so. It was happening. Yeah. And like yeah. You just so like, I was like, maybe I've fallen off him somehow. Like I honestly didn't know. <sighs> and then we hit the ground and Somehow I wasn't knocked unconscious at all. I re I was oh completely awake the entire time. Did you think you're in heaven? Yeah, I was like, surely I've died. Like, surely this is it. And then the next feeling that I had was just the most intense pain throughout my whole body. And I was like, I've gone to hell. Like, <laughs> oh my god, I, I must have been bad because I was like this. It was just the most awful feeling oh my god. that I've ever felt. And then, and then we're in the middle of the Swiss Alps and there's no one around. Oh. And oh, I land on my belly and he's on my back. So I can't, I can't get up. And then I realized like it's up to me to go and find help because at this stage he was still unconscious. So I thought, okay, he's not going to be able Where's to get up. It's like, oh, you've just fully splattered down. Like you're yeah. not in the base camp or anything. No. So we and, landed oh, like. Are a, you in a bush? Whoa. No, we're just in like a, a field. Oh um, my God. So we're, I think a kilometer <laughs> from where we're meant to land. But so I'm kind of like moving my neck around, peering around to see what's what's around me and I can't see any buildings, can't see any people. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to attempt to roll him off me 
and then get up and go and find help. And it was in that moment when I try to roll that I realized I was completely paralyzed from the waist down. Oh my so God. I couldn't use my abs. I couldn't yeah, use my legs. And then I was like, okay, let's just try to do something really simple, like wriggle my toes. And I couldn't even do that. Oh, oh my God. No, and it no, was no, yeah, no, no. terrifying. Ha- oh, how long was it like, how long was this period of you guys sitting there with n- having no help and not knowing what the fuck's going on? And were you seriously questioning whether you're alive, alive or yeah, not? Yeah, it, it seems so not real. So surreal because keep in mind, two minutes earlier, I was this 20 year old overseas on a holiday, like so carefree. So to have such a contrast in such a short amount of time, I just couldn't, like my brain couldn't compute what was happening. But luckily, Gemma was jumping after us and she didn't see anything go wrong, but her instructor must have because they landed like where we oh, were. Okay. Oh so it was probably God. only maybe oh. two or three minutes while we waited for them. But again, it seemed oh like an eternity. Can you imagine? That ins- have you spoken to that instructor like po- post this? I mean, like, what? Well, what, no, happened, I haven't, to him? Yeah. what happened to him? Oh, my instructor. No, no, I was talking oh, about the instructor yeah, that sorry. watched the parachute not come up. Yeah, I haven't spoken oh, to him, but oh. I saw, I read like a witness report or something and they said all they saw was us like spinning really fast dropping to the ground and then I think this witness wherever they were like ran over as well how do you like holy fuck this is obviously like a proper miracle like how like how did you not like explode your brain out of your ears and shit yeah, I have literally no idea. <laughs> but literally. like seriously, yeah, like um, how's your brain gen- intact like, and your question? Yeah. I, I honestly you, don't amazing. know. And yeah, so many people ask me that. They're like, but what was the reason? And it truly like I don't know. And so no one no, knows. No, just no. Like you're just one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Sort yeah. Of. But from what lucky but unlucky. No, so lucky. And I, I feel like I can wow. always, when I tell my story to people, I can always gauge like the kind of person they are because they always say, you're so unlucky or you're so lucky. And Literally. I'm like, of course I'm the luckiest yeah. person ever. Like it's unlucky that it happened in the scheme of every single person that goes skydiving. But the fact that I could survive that, like I just am so lucky. I can't oh, believe it. Oh, you're so amazing and yeah. positive. I want to keep going. I want to. I want to. I want to know. Like, like, did your family just fly the fuck over? I want to know when the friend landed. Oh yeah, tell me. Okay, so so to set the scene, Gemma and I had been best friends since we were like five in primary school. So we'd done everything together our whole lives, and I didn't think it would was possible to get closer. You know what I mean? I thought like we were the closest we could ever be to another human. But then after going through something like that, it just binds you in a way like unlike anything else. Oh, she literally thought you would probably just dead yeah well she she landed and again she said the entire thing she was just hating she reckoned she had a premonition but I think she just like never (laughs) wanted to do it and so she lands she's like thank god that's over and then she hears me screaming from across the field like Gemma I can't move my legs I can't feel my legs help and then she sorry can I say do you remember these moments at all or were you in so much shock and you've remembered the story that Gemma tells you or do you really remember this yeah I remember 100 percent. yeah that blows my mind the only time it goes a bit hazy is from like getting in the emergency helicopter when they started giving me all the drugs um like the painkillers from that the next few days there are a bit hazy but the fall and the field like I remember perfectly no way. but yeah so she runs over to me and I think at first she was like as uh, the same thing that I'd already had time kind of to process, like as if this is happening, like this is so far-fetched as if. And then she just went into action mode. She like ran across the field to this random couple that was walking by, grabbed their phone, gave it to her instructor to call the ambulance and then she called my mum. And back home in Australia it was like 11 p.m. or something. Oh, and so, yeah, I spoke to my mum. And then eventually an emergency helicopter came and we flew to the hospital. Must have been hard as well because, like, English isn't the first language over there either. So, like, trying to explain that you've just fallen from an aeroplane from the sky. Yeah, for sure. It's been not a common. Yeah, I always think that period and the next few days would have been so much harder for Gemma because she's the one that had to actually deal with it. We're only 20 in a foreign country. We can't really have a fluent conversation with anyone. And it took a few days for my family to get there. So she just had to like be your advocate. Be in control of everything. What a legend. Yeah. yeah. And so what hap- why did that happen? Tell us about what happened to the instructor that oh, was strapped yeah. to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what I didn't realise this at the time, obviously. But after they did investigations, they figured out that a few things went wrong that led to that. So basically there's two parachutes in the backpack. There's like the main one which comes out when they pull it. And there's an emergency one, which they wouldn't normally need to use, but it comes out automatically at a certain altitude 
if for some reason the other one isn't already out, like there's this device that somehow knows if you're still falling yeah. too fast. And so my instructor forgot to wear his altimeter, oh, which tells you how high you are and when you're meant to pull it. But oh. I've also heard that when instructors are that um, – Good, they just that know. Good. Yeah, they just know. They just see the ground and they know. Yeah. But so he forgot to wear that. Also, it was a cloudy day, so we jumped from a different height than normal because we were under the clouds or something, and I think it should have been cancelled due to the weather anyway. Oh. But anyway, because he pulled it too late, he pulled it the exact same second that the emergency one was coming out on its own. Oh. What and so, the fuck? Yeah, like if I was told that if he pulled it one second earlier, would have been fine, would have opened. If he pulled it one second later... The emergency, the emergency one would have opened, yeah. but because they came oh, out the exact God. same time, they got all tangled nah. and the cords wrapped around his neck and strangled him. Oh, and so <laughs> it just gets worse. <laughs> it's very dramatic, it's isn't it? Very, yeah. well, it is dramatic. It's really I mean, there's nothing not dramatic yeah, about this whole story, but like, whoa. But yeah, so he was unconscious the entire time, which explains why he wasn't, why he answering, wasn't answering, why he couldn't do anything to fix it, and why on the ground he was just like a dead weight on top of me. Yeah, but he survived. When um, did he come oh to? Gosh. At what point did he come to? Um, as we were laying in the field, very briefly, he woke up for like a second, unclicked himself and then like passed out again off to no the side. Way. Crazy. And what kind of contact did you have with him after? Well, so we were in the same hospital in Switzerland for a month and I was like begging the nurses every day to try and see him because I just wanted to tell him like that I was okay. Obviously I wasn't okay physically, but like I was fine and I forgave him. And oh, you're so well, beautiful. Well, I just thought like imagine the guilt that he would be feeling. Like oh, wow. for me, I'm I'm the one that chose to go skydiving. For him, like he had someone else someone else's life in his hands. Like I just knew that that would be a horrible feeling for him. And so I was begging to see him and he was refusing visitors, like oh. not only me, but like he, apparently he wouldn't even see his family or anyone. Oh, he was really probably scared sad. to see mm. you as well. And then the day that I left, I was like crying to the nurses. I was like, please just tell him I'm about to go to Australia. I don't know when I'll ever be able to see him again. And then just as the ambulance had come to pick me up to take me to the aeroplane, uh, he wheeled into my room oh. in a wheelchair and... I honestly feel like we didn't even speak. He just came over to my bed and we held hands and like looked at each other for like a minute. Oh my God. And then he left. Oh. Yeah. It was like a movie. I feel like I'm watching a movie. I feel like. You feel in the movie. I feel vibes. really inside this. Wow, M. Yeah. And I haven't seen him since. When yeah. was it that you took your first steps again? How many years later? Uh, no, same year. A few no months way. later when oh I was, wow. yeah, when I was in the spinal ward. And there kind of wasn't really a specific day. Again, I feel like in the movies it's like, oh, my God, one day it's a miracle and she's up and at him. But it, there were so many stages. So at first I would walk. Well, at first I was doing so much rehab, like laying down, and then I would get up and walk on like a walking frame where I would lean my whole body weight onto it and kind of just drag my legs underneath me. And then I progressed to two crutches and then eventually one crutch and, oh, my God, the story of when I actually took my first steps is so funny. I I kind of forgot about it. But then when I was writing my book, I remembered this specific moment and I'd never told anyone about it. But so basically I was laying in bed one night in my little room in the hospital. And when you first get to the spinal ward, you see you meet like a physio, occupational therapist, nutritionist, psychologist, all these things. And the nutritionist was to warn us that because we couldn't move as easily as we used to, we had to be more careful about what we ate. And I was like, nah, mate, like I'm, I'm going through enough. I'm going to eat. Like, Literally, yeah. I'm eating the burger. Yeah, Shut I'm all up. right. <laughs> I um, deserve it. Yeah. And anyway, so many visitors that came would bring me like chocolates and lollies, you know, like just be yeah, nice, bring me that. And so my mum would put it on the other side of the room so that when I was laying in bed, at night I couldn't just like mindlessly eat because obviously like that's what I would have done. And this one night it was like 10 p.m. and I was laying there and I was like, oh, my God, like could could really go some chalky. <laughs> you could see it across <laughs> yeah. the room. I'm like, Torture. oh. And I had the little nurse buzzer and I could have, but I was like, it doesn't feel like a good enough reason to be like, hey, Dulls, can you come and get me oh, some I would have done it. Chalky. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And so I don't know where my wheelchair was. Don't know where my crutches were. But I was like, it's okay. I am going to be able to like hold onto the bed and then hold onto the furniture around the room and like get my way over there. Oh. But as I'm like doing this, which was so hard, but I'm like holding onto this cupboard or something. And then as I'm up there, I realize that it's actually further away than oh, I realized. Okay. And I was like, 
oh my God, what am I going to do? And now then, I'm stuck. Yeah, I'm stuck. And then I was like, okay, well, what if I just try to take a step without holding on to anything to get to the chocolate? And then my mind was like, oh, but what if I fall? And then my mind was also like, well, you're fallen from higher dust. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be all right. And so I, I did. I was like, okay, I let go. And then I took two steps to get to the chocolate and then like landed on this chocolate oh table. But I got it. I threw oh it to the bed. God. I somehow went back. And that was how I took my first step. Oh, steps. my goodness. 